Brook is made possible by the members of the Nine Network. Thanks for joining us for another edition of Donnybrook. Good to have you with us. Lots of breaking news we're going to get to, but first, I want to meet the panelists around the table for this edition, starting with the media veteran herself from KTRS, the Big 550, Wendy Weiss, along with Mr. Bill McClellan, one of our founders with the St. Louis Post-Dispatch and STLToday.com. Another founder from the Big 550 KTRS and the Riverfront Times, Ray Hartman, and from 590 and 97.1, the St. Louis American, STLMag.com, the king of all media, apparently, <laughs> Mr. Alvin <laughs> Reed. And Bill, some breaking news today, and that is that the third person from the Steve Stenger administration is about to plead guilty in addition to the county executive, former county executive Steve Stenger and the head of economic development Sheila Sweeney who have already pleaded guilty. Tomorrow apparently in federal court Bill Miller the chief of staff for former county executive Steve Stenger is supposed to plead guilty. To exactly what? We don't know yet but according to documents filed by the U.S. Attorney in previous cases. He's the guy who urged Sheila Sweeney to give a contract to Barger and Associates because, and primarily because, Barger had been a donor to Steve Stenger's election campaign. Now, Miller himself is an attorney, which you might say, how can somebody who knows the law so uh, casually break it, especially when the rumors were that the FBI we're following Sheila Sweeney. What do you make of this? Well, I find it very strange that they would continue with anything remotely illegal when they understood that the feds were looking for them. As far as uh, what Mr. Miller ha has done, you know, I'm a 20th century person who grew up in Cook County where the government, the, the city government, did favors for their donors. And you know, Mayor Daley would never have thought of giving contracts to his enemies. Mm -hmm. And so I, there's a little bit about the 21st century crimes that I'm a little taken back of. I mean, I, I know that Steve Stenger went way too far and was very obvious about it, but I'm not sure if all the underlings are really guilty of much other than uh, bad judgment. I look forward to reading your book or your book or your book because there's still so much that I don't understand. This was like the James Gang. It really was like the James Gang. Uh, and they were so uh, brazen about it and, and n speaking very openly about it, even after the cars were spotted, even after the word was leaking out, people started to talk about how odd things w appeared. And they still... They still, you know, went ahead with with whatever it was they had planned, whether it was Northwest Plaza, you know, the, the Barger and Associates. It's quite remarkable to me. I mean, and there is there's no answer to it. Apparently. Well, you know, the saying that honor among thieves and how many times has that been proven over the last 300 years is not true. I think once somebody flips and you still sitting around at these tables having these discussions exactly. and you don't know that they flipped. I, you know, you got to be wise enough to to kind of know that. Well, wait a minute now. Who's could who's, they have? Who could they have? Right. And I think that that just got negated. So they thought this is a yeah. So the feds are out there looking around. They don't know what we're talking about. Meanwhile, they were listening to everything you said. But at the same time, all these involved. I I just can't. I cannot give them a pass in that they got caught up in some kind of stinger led corruption i think all of them were just kind of on on the bad side and i hear you bill you know that this is favors and all that but something else was going on here and i think that it was one of those that it was beyond i won't get caught it was be it was like hey i'm not committing a crime because i'm so and so well they found well, out they yeah, weren't so and so the old brooklyn bridge point i mean i think mm -hmm. that 
there's the old saying, power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. I think there's certainly an element of that. And, and I'm not in a position, obviously I misjudged a lot of folks, so I, who knows who was, you know, corrupt coming in or corrupt going on, I don't know. I do agree with Bill also that, uh, with the exception that I don't think what you're talking about is 20th century, I think it's also 21st century. And that is, I think we have a system, and this does not in any way, uh, it, you know, exonerate or mitigate what happened but we have a system across the board from the smallest local level up to the national level that is a form of essentially legalized bribery mm -hmm. that the, the idea for example that if I give you X dollars I should have access even you access, access yeah. why 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 should I have access why should a politician give more attention to a donor even on an issue why should they and the answer is they shouldn't but we have uh, any times you try to talk about campaign public uh, campaign financing and everything everybody shouts you down I still believe in that and, well, and I, I think I, I, take it further. I, I think I it's say, our system I would say if you give money to an elected official in st. Louis County or make it st. Louis City or the state you then cannot get a contract or a grant within a period of two, three years from that county, that city, or that state. That would be fine with well, me. <laughs> but I think what happened was I people think. just assumed that if the donor gave you money, then you have to consider them or give them the cement contract or whatever. And there was so much of this going on, the guys got, they, they didn't even remember that there's also a law that says that you cannot give anything. Anything. I think Charlie, I think you're right. A donation. Does, but how does a lawyer yeah. not remember? Because they got caught up in the culture. This is a hubris. Is it was Louis. a hubris. And, and, he's, and he's working for Stenger. And if St you know, he, he's an aide, essentially, chief of staff. And if his boss says, by the way, uh, call Sweeney and tell her we got to get this moving, so, okay. But I, 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 yeah. Well, I would agree with that, except I need to hear what he's going to plead guilty to, because well, it's got to be point. beyond that. I would hope it was beyond that. And, but, and Ray, I kind of disagree with you. Like, if I were elected, whatever, okay, President <laughs> of the United States, and they were trying to shut down, you know, Channel 9 and PBS, and you all wanted to come and talk to me about it, I would, uh, listen, you have, <laughs> you know me, whatever, you didn't give me anything, but we worked together. I, you could come and we could talk about it, but I, you know, said, what can I do? I won't fire the guy who's in charge of the FCC. At least oh. I wouldn't do it. I don't okay. know. Okay. Right. 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 All right, let's move on. <laughs> Alvin, I want to ask you. Confessing. Yeah, yeah. right. Quite, quite he'd the go week. or she'd go. Alvin, I want to ask you about uh, the state of Missouri. It turns out that it may have an unusual distinction by tomorrow because it may not have an abortion clinic. Planned Parenthood has said that uh, because of various problems it's having with the state health department and regulators that it may shut down. Now, we're talking about the facility on Forest Park Avenue right around the corner here from our Olive Street broadcast facilities. Essentially, the governor has said that Planned Parenthood has not been keeping up with regulations and statutes. Planned Parenthood has said there's red tape that's clearly designed to put it out of business. Well, some people have said they're not going to visit St. Louis and go to schools here. The New York Post ran a piece indicating that uh, students who are juniors in high school on the Upper East Side said they're withdrawing their applications from Washington University. They won't visit. Do you think the state will be harmed because of this distinction of being the only state in the union without abortion services? Absolutely. And I think, and, and I'm not going into the abortion debate as much as I'm saying that this kind of decision does hurt the state. I don't think anybody will come to the state as a re result of some of these decisions, but certainly people will not come or will leave, all right? And abortion is not this only issue. The fact that we might not have an open abortion clinic, not the only one. We're the only one that doesn't protect, protect um, LGBT people on the job. You just walk in and fire them. Well, we don't have a, um, uh, you know, addictive, you know, uh, we're the only state without a registry. Registry, right. right. We're the okay. only state, and it's just ridiculous. And whatever your feelings are, maybe on some of these issues, think about what the cost is to the state. And there's a big cost, and there will be. And if you say, I don't care about these people, and I don't care about those doctors, and I don't care about that, mm. well, then that's fine. But acknowledge that there is a price to pay. Well, I think there's a price to pay, Alvin, and I think that there'll be a number of young women in particular who are juniors, seniors in high school who say, I'd rather go to a state where I feel like my rights are protected. But as far as Washington University goes, they have so many kids applying that this won't really impact them. 
There'll be plenty of kids to take the places of the kids who choose not to come. I think it does affect them, even if it do, even if that's true. And I don't know much about their enrollment situation, but it's going to affect the it, from their perspective. I'm sure they're concerned about the quality of you know some of the applicants. And much like you've had when you have a state that is perceived on a on a hot button issue to be an outlier. So, for example, when that was a Confederate flag issue with some states, you will find you know, sports organizations and major conventions. And again, it doesn't matter where you are in the issue. They will vote with their pocketbooks. And I think Alvin's right. I think that on, on this particular the, the sort of symbolism, not only on this mm -hmm. issue, but being one of about five or six states that has no rape and incest exception, I think will have an economic impact. I think it's going to be really interesting because Netflix, everybody is always talking about Netflix and its future and the algorithms in question. And now Netflix is saying that they are not going to, they're, they're seriously considering pulling up stakes in, uh, in Georgia, where several of their hit television shows are, are filmed. And I think that's kind of, it's just going to be very interesting to see well, in, in, you know, in a year or so how all of this falls On the out. other hand, if, you know, 50% or so of uh, the country is pro-life, self-described, then maybe Missouri mm -hmm. will be seen as more attractive to some. But I, I now this, you come <coughs> off sounding really elitist and I don't want to or whatever, but maybe that 50% that won't come are maybe the, the 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 people that you want to come? You know, like it's kind of, and I don't mean to. to that that sounds really elitist. like I say elitist, but <laughs> yeah. well, it, it's, it's really, like you know, of those that you know you you want to attract to your state, you do not want to turn those away for for any reason. Well, see, I think we had already. Uh, I I still believe that we had already taken a cultural black eye with the you know the Michael Brown, the mm -hmm. Ferguson. I I think that there are a lot of companies that at least threatened to bypass us. I have no convention idea whether it's down, convention they say. business. That, 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 and I know you always say, make an excuse, but it is. And, and, and there's an, the fact is, I, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, well, I mean, no, the, that, the, that, the NAACP has, still has still a moratorium has on and, uh, visiting and I, you just, I mean, Missouri. It, it, what's so amazing to me about it is that it hasn't been that long ago that Missouri was sort of the median state. Missouri yes. was, was in the middle of everything. We weren't really a low budget state. We weren't, we didn't have the lowest cigarette tax. We didn't have the lowest, well, probably maybe mm. we did that, but we, we didn't have the low, we were going back to say the 70s and 80s, we were just sort of an average state and we were a bellwether state in elections. And now all of a sudden, We've like really, and I'm not sure what caused it to change that much because I don't feel like St. Louis has changed that much. And, and yeah. you know, I don't but know. Right. I don't the know. state I grew up in is not the state I live in now. I and think that it's a confluence me. of Donald I, I would only Trump, say a it, V2, it, it, this. If, if you follow the media, it's not the same. But I think in your daily life, it's probably. St. Louis wait a minute, hasn't changed wait a yeah, we, can, we can't elect a Democrat because they can't get out state votes, Charlie. Uh, but, but no, but I'm saying in the ordinary life you live, day to day, sure. right. if you don't pick up a newspaper or watch Donnybrook, you wouldn't know that Missouri is any different from Illinois, uh, no, I disagree wherever. with that. And I'll tell you what, Governor Parsons would not call the president of the Missouri State Teachers Association at his or her house because they had something to talk about. And I answered the phone when your former employer, Kit Bond, called my house to talk to my mom about something, some issue, okay? Right. That would not happen. How do you know he wouldn't? Know. And, right. and, and one of the things, Charlie, because politics, Politics would because we're all not, in our silos. Would, would not, it, how dare you talk to them, teachers? I don't, I don't I think it's true about Mike Parson. I, I do. I, no, no, no. He's he's not a divisive he's very guy. Different. And the other thing I'll say, generally, well, I don't think he is. Well, speaking of Parson, right. <laughs> Parson from the rural area, the one of the things that has really changed, also, and I really believe this in my since I went to Mizzou, was we didn't used to have this urban rural kind of hatred or dis... Or, Never. Or it, I, I remember going to Mizzou or and City the Aggies County. were my favorite people to Can meet. Can I tell you something? It's only changed. in the media. It's only in the well, media. Maybe in real life, no, no one's no. upset with the farmers and the farmers no, 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 aren't no, upset no. with the but urban. Excuse me. If you take the issues like the puppy mills and you take the gun issue, the, the urban rural split is real that, in political that's circles. In political circles. Well, but I mean, that, but those are real life. No, but those are real But you don't walk down the street with... Uh, a chip on your shoulder regarding I don't, ur I like rural America. People. Right. I, I don't have it, but I'm just right. saying mm -hmm. we are divided culturally on rural air, rural urban issues that we didn't used to be at right. that level. Or so it seems. Like Grace said, okay. we're, we're no longer a bellwether state. 
Yeah. No, that's, that's true. We're a predictably conservative state, and that's just the way that, it is. You were talking about a Democratic governor. Okay. How do you explain that John Bell Edwards of Louisiana is, is saying that he is going to he is going to sign this mm -hmm. restrictive abortion bill well, in that state. I mean, that was kind of shocking. It's a red state. It's red well, state. of course it's a red state. Okay. Hey, why don't you let's uh, talk about uh, what seems to be um, an almost forgotten story. Remember in 1993 when we had the worst flooding of all time in our area? It was a major story and everyone was sandbagging. And now maybe it's because the Blues are in the playoffs. Let's go Blues. <laughs> Uh, we have now the second highest crests of all time in the history of floods. And they, this goes back into the early 1800s when they measured river levels. Well, now I would say that people have kind of moved on and they're rather nonchalant about the flooding now. Do you, do you think that's because people feel that those who still live in floodplains are to blame somewhat themselves? I think it's that, and I, I think it just doesn't it doesn't reach us. You remember during the flood of 93, right. we would all receive phone calls from people who thought we were, we were all swimming, you know, that, that, that it was like Atlantis, you know, that we were all underwater. Mm -hmm. And it, it doesn't affect many people, but reading the story about Clarksville and the post office and how they are closing for good because they just, they can't, they can't do it. And the mayor of Clarksville, her name is Mrs. Mayor Smiley, uh, she is feeling awful for the businesses that rely on, on the Postal Service. And I'm like you. I, I think that if you live on Front Street or First Avenue or whatever, we've got to stop this. We can't keep managing the rivers because they won't be managed. I mean, they are rivers, and they say the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. And we... We're, we still find ourselves here. I was living on the East Coast in 1993, and I was at US, USA Today, and people were asking me, is your mom, are your parents okay? And yeah, I said, like, yeah. listen, if Kirk was <laughs> so underwater, you all better be, like, building, like, <laughs> right, an ark, right. okay? It's not that bad. But there was one difference, right? If back then, like, farmhouses and people's homes around the St. Louis area were getting swept down the Mississippi. Valmire. Right. Valmire. And if that were to occur, it would probably draw a little bit more of our interest, but you hit the nail on the head. There are two things going on right now. People aren't paying attention to the floods around here because of the St. Louis Blues, and the St. Louis Cardinals are getting a free pass right now because of the St. Louis <laughs> Blues. And I'm not, and one is way more serious than the other, but right now we're focused. If there was, if the Blues were out of the playoffs, that would lead, to, that would lead the news every day, all this water. It really would. It's an interesting point. You know, Arnold, I was one of many people that was sandbagging in Arnold in 93. It, the, the, the damage or the results were very palpable, and we haven't seen quite that here. Now, maybe we haven't, maybe, maybe it didn't get covered. I was interested in that post office story, though. And they have that motto, it's like through rain, not, well, I forget exactly how it goes. Rain, snow, sleet, or hail. Yeah. Or, or, through rain, sleet, and sl snow. It you doesn't know, we're say gonna, anything about high like, water. Now they say, now we, but flooding, we're out of here. Well, <laughs> is the, well, they, I mean, maybe, maybe it, they have to do it, but it seems a little unfair to that town for the federal government, well, the post office. Well, we is, go, the, hey, is the, the done, post office done. anchored? I don't know. To the riverside? I, I mean, they, they have move to close the, the post, post office? office. Well, they, <laughs> that would make, the that would make sense some sense. Blocks, but, yeah. and, why, and why the post office basically said, <laughs> one more flood and we're out of here. And it's that's like, exactly how do you what get, they how said. Do you, that's, is that the new motto of the post office? Hey. One more flood and we're hey. out of here? Hey. You know, I mean, exactly I don't know. I, that said. seems strange to me. I, I well, I feel it, very it, bad for the folks that are affected. Yeah, I feel bad for them, but if they've been through this before and their properties have flooded in the past, I think then, they probably know the drill and they know what they're dealing with. But if it, but any, if if it has become as much a part of our identity as the Blues or the Cardinals, honestly, that oh yeah, it's the I mean. I think mm -hmm. that's I think that's that's very true. That is true. People are right. very comfortable Have with the idea. Have you ever went on it's the like, Clarksville oh, yeah. sky lift? Mm -hmm. that, it, does that still run? But it, when he did, when we, it's when we were right kids. by the river. Yeah. I mean, when you were up on that, it's like, oh look, the river is like right there. Well, and the to, town is right there. Not right. everybody can and afford the to just pick up. Oh, no, not oh. anymore. Not everybody can afford to just say, well. I'm out of here. I mean, well, the so, post office No, that's can. true. But, no, I, no, I'm yeah. saying the post office does. Well, I, actually, I'm just maybe not the post office can't, right? Hey, yeah. Ray, let me ask you about uh, those St. Louis Blues, who right. I think right. on right. Saturday are going to play the first game ever in June in they their are. franchise they history. Are. And uh, they're tied now with 
the Bruins. Right. And uh, you're, of course, longtime Blues fan. Right. You were there in the First early year. 1970s. Yeah. 68. <laughs> yes, Thank absolutely. You Thank you for dating me. Well, no, good. I have archaeological value here. It's okay. <laughs> okay. So it's uh, a game where last night right. there was a terrible hit against Matt Grilch. Uh, right. Forgive me, I don't know his exact name, but right. he, he went to the hospital, either, and there seems to be, they're talking about how this team, the St. Louis Blues, unlike maybe right. the Blackhawks or the Penguins, which were known for their finesse and their speed, right. were kind of a rough team. Right. But do you think that the fans kind of overlook the injuries where you got Roberts going to the hospital the night before, and then last night this guy uh, with a brutal hit, and there's been a lot of high sticking and checking, and... Uh, are we just seeing future concussion victims out there on the ice? Well, I don't think it, it rises nearly to the level of the NFL, certainly, really? as far as a concussion, CTE problem. Although it is a, a concern. I know youth hockey is really trying to address it, and it's a, it's a, it's a very definite concern in hockey. The hockey culture has, has always been a thing unto itself. And, of course, you talk about those first years. You can barely, you know, Jacques, Jacques Plante, who arguably the greatest goalie in history, who just did a little cameo, came out of retirement to play for the Blues the first few years, was the first goalie to wear a mask. I was going to say. I mean, he was, and he was, you know, kind of ridiculed for that. And mo I don't think any of the players wore helmets in 1968. They had footage, and, no and helmets. Just, there's an argument that says the players treated each other with more respect because of that, that they were, they were, they were a little more conscious of, you didn't see hel 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 helmetless guys getting crashed into the boards the way it has now. Um, so it's really changed. I don't like it when I hear, I mean, obviously one of the things in hockey, they still only talk about upper body and lower body injuries because in a, particularly in a playoff series, they, they'll target somebody mm. if they know what their injury is. I, you know, my main concern right now is that we win three more games. <laughs> that's <laughs> really what I'm going to I, 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 I want to see games. three more wins. And that's, um, that's the guys out there concerned. <laughs> I get paid millions of dollars. I, I look. I feel sorry for my boy. It's got a concussion right now, but I got to play tonight, so we'll worry about that then. Um, from from covering sports, but especially when I was in college and working for the team, I would invite any fan, not because they you really don't want to see it, mm -hmm. but if you see what goes on Monday, played college football, you know, like Sunday through Friday, and pro football, like up until the game day, you'd be more terrified by that than you would by the actual game, what they, what people go through to play. And, you know, you're just, it's, it's not to say like you're a gladiator, you pay the money to see it, and you get paid to do it, but there is a sense where like, hey, that's what you signed on for. And by the way, now here's the interesting thing about hockey. Hmm. Shin, who checked that guy into the boards, he'll probably be suspended like for three or four games at the beginning of was, next uh, season. Wasn't it Sunquist who... So it was Sunquist. Sunquist, I'm sorry. Right. Yeah. sorry Did they tell about, I don't know. I mean, yeah. 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 All right. Well, how about on a nicer note, how about um, Chris Kerber, who is, of course, a broadcaster play-by-play -play for the Blues on KMOX and beyond. He has decided to give the second period Alvin Reed to uh, John Kelly, the longtime Blues television announcer who, because it's carried on the network on television, mm -hmm. is not, he's not working in the offseason. So Kerber gave Kelly the opportunity to call the Stanley Cup, just like his father did in 1970. Well, what would you make of that? Uh, I guess it's okay. I, um, you probably you guys are too young to remember this. No, but back during when the Cardinals were back in the playoffs in the 80s, same kind of thing, and they would invite the actual uh, network would have, like, Jack Buck, and then the announcer from the other team would actually right. do some innings during Ernie the Harwell. game. Right. And it was kind of, that was kind of cool. I know the name Kelly means so much to the people of St. Louis, and I think this is a special situation. So I applaud it at the same time. I, 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 see, I, I think that's what, that's what hockey represents. They're not a bunch of peacocks or showboaters. They're like enforcers. They're, mm -hmm. you know, just yeoman athletes who have each other's backs. They, you know, they don't yap a lot in front of the television cameras or the radio mm -hmm. cameras. They take matters into their own hands in the locker room. They <laughs> put their hits on it, certain it, players. Oh, it's a very nice gesture. I, I, it yeah, is. It is a I, very I nice was, gesture. I thought it was... I, I think it was more than nice, and I, I had, had the opportunity once to meet Mr. Dan Kelly, and he was mm. so such a gentleman, and um, I, I, I really, and I know you aren't are putting it down, but I, I think it was, for Gerber, to, I, I thought it was terrific. You know, why it's a, you know why it's a big deal? I think it's, a, I think because it's terrific that he did if the play of the century takes place in the second period, right, right. and it could, right. 
forever and a day, that highlight will be heard by John Kelly, not Chris Kerber. Hey, Chris, so I think Chris he, gets, he should get a lot of credit. Ego aside, allowing that. Kelly to get I think this. You're right. I this think you're right. They're, not, they're not peacocks. I they don't it, worry about I that think stuff. He was, I don't think they did. First class gesture. Yeah. I really did. Um, by the way, Joe Micheletti, longtime Blues oh, announcer. And a great he's, one. He's doing the NHL Network games, and I listened to the first period last night on satellite radio, and he was so fair, you know, and I was thinking it was 2 2 and all that. And I was like, Boy, if you're listening to this, you wouldn't know that he's got St. Louis. Well, he's St. Louis. Do you right? think NBC? Now, the fans have said that NBC has been pro Boston Bruins. I think they've done a great job. Now, uh, last night they corrected. I think they corrected the situation. I I, the first game. I always very, disagree with they that. Were like a, people like say, a I hate people that. say Joe I, Buck hates the Cardinals when he does the World Series. If people, Cowboys fans say Troy Aikman right. hates the Cowboys, I don't pay any. I, I think I am so with you on that. This I whole agree. getting Romo worked up the about that. Not, first of all. What's a Doc Emmerich, I think, I mean, is just great, amazing. I mean, just mm -hmm. his vocabulary and, and his wit. I mean, he's just amazing. I've always loved this. This idea that we just have a chip in our shoulder at the announcers. I mean, if you want to get I agree. down on the other team, go ahead. But. Thank you, Ray. All right, let's uh, find out what folks had to say about the show last week, starting with this letter from Paul Ebenreck of St. Peter's. Police officers and firefighters are emergency responders. Perhaps a solution to police officer residency is to allow them to live outside of city limits, but in a restricted distance from the precinct. It's not effective if the officer lives an hour away. We also heard from Matt Hahn of St. Anne. I just saw the letter asking to update the Donnybrook set. Don't ever change the Donnybrook set. It reminds me of my childhood, and I'm still watching every Thursday. It's flawless. Thank you, Matt. You can write us care of KETC, 3655 Olive Street, St. Louis, Missouri, 63108. Don't forget those emails, letters at KETC.org, and those tweets, hashtag DonnybrookSTL. You can also listen to us on your local podcast at Apple, Spotify, Google Play, and TuneIn. And you can start tweeting away right now because... Our friends Ray and Wendy will be taking your calls and reading your tweets in just a matter of moments on Donnie Brook Your Turn. So, go Blues. Thanks for joining us, but don't touch that dial. Donnie Brook is made possible by the members of the Nine Network. We are back. Welcome to Donnybrook. Your turn. I'm Wendy Weiss with the star of the show, oh, yeah. Mr. Ray Hartman. And uh, it was a lively discussion tonight. Yes. And can't wait to hear what you think about it. So let's, let's go to Judy in St. Louis. Hi, Judy. Hi, Judy. Hi. Um, yes, I am Judy in St. Louis. And I must speak, I was at the rally today for reproductive rights. And <laughs> I am so disappointed with the fact that you all focused on kids coming here to go to school and not coming to school because of reproductive rights. You need to focus on women. You need to focus on women and what they are going through. And do you know that the infant mortality rate in this state is, is the highest in Missouri? Abortion is a human rights issue, and I really am upset that you skirted all of these issues. Uh, Governor Parsons told so many lies yesterday when he said the state is not going to license us. We are fully 
in compliance with everything in this state. And again, I can't stress to you enough, abortion is health care. And I was so disappointed that you all did not speak out about this, but is concerned about kids coming in from to go to college. Okay. In the meantime, we've got women suffering. Well, okay. In, in fairness, I, I did write my column about it last week in the Riverfront Times, and you and I are on the same side of this issue. Um, it is an and issue we did, we did discuss. It last week. We discussed it last week. The, the, we just took a different angle on it. We have certainly over the years um, very unpleasantly often had this disagreement, and, and, and the story today, as I say, I wrote I'd be happy to have you read my column of not this Wednesday, but the previous Wednesday in the Riverfront Times on this very subject, and I feel very passionately about it. But tonight we were just talking about one specific element, which is what would the impact be on um, St. Louis over this. Um, so sorry you're disappointed, but I, I hope you get a chance to check out the RFT because I, I feel very passionately about this. And, um, but thank we, you for the call. Thank you for your call, Judy. And let's move now to Brian in Pacific, Missouri. Hi, Brian. Welcome. You're on Donnie Brook. Your turn. Hey, John. Fine. Hey. Thank you. I remember living in the late '80s, living in Arizona, and when the state didn't pass Martin Luther King holiday, the boycott effect right. was wrecked. It was economically all the way around for the whole area of Phoenix as well as the whole state of Tusa, uh, Arizona. You're right. That's a good example of uh, how economics can affect a, an outlier state. You're right. And the thing about it is, by Missouri being in the middle of the country and everything, it sends signals that we don't have it together enough to where we can socially expect people's rights and everything to be able to live with their own meaning and everything. Right. Right. Okay. Thank you, well, Brian. appreciate the call, Brian. Yeah, I think it's, um, we're in a position, particularly with some of the, as you pointed out, with Ferguson, some of the other image problems we have, whatever your views are on the subject, um, and I know we disagree on some basic stuff, but it, to, it's one thing to be, to have policies that we've had, but if we want to become one of the states that's making a big stand on this, particularly without exceptions for rape and incest and some of the other, and, and it being the only state in the country without an abortion clinic, I think there is a price to be paid for that. I do. And I don't think it has to do with differences we have about the subject. But, you know, we talked about it. Let's go to Bill from Rock Hill. Hi, Bill. Good evening. Uh, Wendy, you were talking about the lack of players wearing protection at the time the Blues came in. There were always two players at that time on the Blues that wore helmets. Uh, Frank St. Marseille and Red Berenson always wore a helmet. Right, right, right. And there was an incident that occurred that year that caused a number of players mm -hmm. to start wearing, you know, more players started wearing helmets. There was a guy who played for the old Minnesota Stars. Bill Masterson. North Stars. Masterson? Yes, who got killed on the eye. Yeah. And it wasn't because of an errant check or anything like that. I think he just... Fell no. down his own and hit his head. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's still a trophy named after him to this day. Is it Masters after Masterson or Masterton? I forget Masterson. Right? Yeah, and the yeah. number of players wearing helmets went up considerably after that. That's a good uh, point, Bill. Better, you know, and also at that time, Glenn Hall, who was the Blues' starting goalie for most of the season, he did not wear a mask, but the Blues' backup goalie, Seth Martin, at that time did, and he made Hall a mask that he initially wore only in practice, but then. Yeah. The following season, he started. Hall he started said, wearing a mask. He did start. So I good, think good, right now, good memory. Every, every, good. I think now all the players are required to wear a helmet, and if they sign their contract after a certain date, they also have to wear the visor on them. Mm -hmm. Right. No, Although I, I've heard. Yeah. Okay. My brother has commented repeatedly. My brother is a hockey goalie. He says he thinks all players should wear a full visor rather than the half visor. Okay. Um, you know, for protection. Yeah, it's an interesting point. Yeah, you see now, for example, in a, in a middle of play, if a goalie loses his mask, oh my gosh. the play stops yeah. like instantly. Well, and who if is, you can who imagine is, the days when Hall and others didn't mm. wear one. Now, I say by the time, I remember seeing some photos from the from the last series and, and with Boston in 70, and he had a mask at that point. But I think, I'm pretty sure Jacques mm. Pont was the pioneer of it. One of the, and, uh, one of wow. the, one of the players that I saw in the, uh, the, 
footage from, you know, the arch archival footage, they were not wearing masks, and it was it's crazy. Just, it was just crazy to see, or well, a helmet. So and there was the longest time. I, I want to say Harold Snips of the Blues was one of the last. They they grandfathered in your right not to wear a helmet, and that sounds and it familiar. Was, that was his motorcycle riders. That was his. I believe Harold Snips was one of the last ones. And correct me if any hockey fans are out there, but but there was a badge of honor. Yeah. Toward, oh, in, sure. Like in the early '80s or whatever it was that sure. you could still. And I don't think any of the players attempted to skate without a helmet. Who today. got cut last night? Um, I don't know. It was such a fast oh, game. Right. I can't even remember which which player. One of our got players. Cut. Yeah, yeah. One of us. One of our. One of ours. Yes. Listen to me. No, it's a it's a it's a brutal game. But anyway, and uh, fun to watch. Let's go Blues. Let's also who's let's next? Go to Katie in Edwardsville. Hi, Katie. Welcome. You're Thank on you. Donnie Brook. Your turn. Hello. Hi. Uh, long time watcher. Uh, first time to get through. Well, thank you for coming. Uh, I just. I wanted to comment more on last week's show, and I couldn't get through, but it was more on uh, the hypocrisy between the motorcycle helmet law to give people a choice to uh, wear a helmet or not, to carry a gun or not, but yet women aren't given the opportunity to choose on their health care issues. And I, I, as a pro-life uh, non-supporter, but, but if you believe in pro-life, I don't understand how these three things aren't relatable. I don't think any of us last week were in favor of a... Uh, a, a non-helmet law. I don't think anybody on the panel, and that I'm pretty sure that was was it last week. I'm sorry, they do all run together, but it, it was last week. No one was in favor of uh, of the non-helmet law. You said there was a third thing. Yeah, I just don't understand how Missouri uh, legislators can justify having. The choice for a, a, a helmet, a choice for a gun, but women aren't given okay. a choice for their health care issues. I, I, the gun, I sorry. It. Okay, the gun. All right. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm, uh, <laughs> I don't know that the three, I think they're all separate issues. Personally, I'm very much uh, in favor of gun control, but also in favor of people's right to possess a gun. So I don't know that that Right. One, and I'm, you know. Wendy's pro-life, I'm pro-choice, it is it is what it is, and um, I, I do think Missouri is uh, moving into some very unfortunate territory right now, both on the, the bill that was passed and the, the actions against And Katie, I, I don't know what the situation in, is, in, uh, is in Illinois, but, you know, one of, one of the issues, if you want to have an apples to apples or apples to oranges comparison, has always been that parents don't get to know or receive any kind of parental notification if their daughter is having an abortion, if their underage daughter is having an abortion, but they have to run through all sorts of hoops to have their daughter's ears pierced. So there's, there's all sorts of hypocrisy and inconsistencies all over the place and on both sides of the river. But I, I don't think this is over by a long shot, but we're happy that you finally got through. Thank so you for, for calling and watching the show. Let's go to the Twitterverse. To Joni, 820-35791. I don't watch hockey anymore because the rules are not enforced, fouls, as they are in basketball. It's become pure barbarism and the closest thing to murder on the ice. Well, oh my, I don't know about that one, but we'll, we'll, who's next? At Annie Marie Berry, if they are closing the abortion clinic for the health of women, then will the governor start closing gun stores for the health of all? Interesting question, Ms. Berry of Glendale. We thank you. And Captain Weil writes, tweets, it's the usual pay for play. If donors can't get a return on their investment, friends bought politicians, they won't donate. I... Thank you, and I like Charlie's idea of having... I think uh, we have one more. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Do we have one more? I think we do. Okay, Please at say. Craig Riggins. It will be interesting to see who will be on the next domino to fall in the Steve Stanger scandal. Wouldn't it all be surprised to see that a mega name or names being implicated 
and or indicted in this mess. We thank you at Craig Riggins and, and your tweets are always welcome. Hashtag Donnybrook STL. And there is a lot of chatter in the, uh, where, whatever you want to call it, the courthouse world or whatever, that, that there's more to come. Other dominoes. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see You've said happens. that all along. Let's go to Randall from Jerseyville. Hello, Randall. What's on your mind? Hi, Randall. Hi. I'm uh, just wondering, uh, what, uh, on the Illinois side over here, they're, they're claiming they're running out of sandbags. Was they quit making? Uh, I just don't understand why a person would run out of sandbags. Now, uh, 1,400 people in a town, I can understand that. I, I can understand why they close up the league. I, I don't know the answer to your question. I, I don't. I don't either. And uh, the the articles that I was reading made it sound like some of these sandbags have have become obsolete, you know, that mm -hmm. they that that many of these smaller cities up and down the rivers have a new not automated but close to being automated and a new system that that makes the the sandbags unnecessary. But we'll look into that. You're right, Randall, it certainly doesn't seem like sandbags is is anything you'd have to worry about in terms of a shortage, right especially now, during peak yeah. flood season. Right now we're just hoping everybody stays safe. And we can sometimes it's hard to d discuss those issues when really what you're just hoping for is everybody be safe, stay, be safe. Absolutely. Um, let's go to Dave in Defiance. Hey, Dave. Hi, Dave. Yes, thanks for taking my call. Uh, I just wanted to make a comment about the abortion issue in Wash U. Uh -huh. Washington University just one fine place to go, and probably, in my opinion, anybody that wants to hold back and stay away from Wash U. It's their loss, and for every person that drops back, you'll probably have five standing in line to want to go to that fine university. Okay. And that was Bill's point tonight, that uh, their wait list is probably two or three miles long, so um, it probably won't have too much of an impact. And as I was saying, I don't think the economic issues that could be related to this publicity we're getting um, are limited to to the, to the schools. To the schools at all. But, um, and I don't know enough about Washington University's uh, um, you know, admission situation. I, I, it's my understanding that for all schools, admissions is, isn't the snap that it once was. No. And, and keep in mind, they want to even, it's not so much, you know, Washington University or SLU or other schools aren't just about getting tuition dollars as much as getting, keeping a standard of excellence. And so, you know, I mean, a lot of it is, is it's not just about whether they could fill the, the university up, but uh, we'll see what happens. I hope, I, I'm hoping that they so get this fixed So you're saying that only I'm just saying that a they, certain class of person is, I mean. It's not a class, but Washington I think. Washington University isn't going to have to lower their standards. Well, I'm no, sorry. but I mean, if it ends up, if it, if it ends up affecting things like their, and I, I personally think the test scores are overrated, but. But they do keep score on SAT scores and things like that, mm -hmm. and and they are not bulletproof in terms of being affected yep. by you know qualified students not want to come here. I, I don't think that's that it should be just. I I don't agree with just saying it's it's nothing. Um, I'm sure it's great concern to Washington University um, and perhaps other schools here. And who's businesses. who's next? Uh, let's go to Bill in Marthasville. Hi, Bill. Welcome. You're on Donnybrook. Your turn. Thank you. Uh, Alvin indicated that the state would be worse off with the possible loss of those who favor abortion than the possible gain of those who favor abortion, or, or I'm sorry, favor pro-life. Right. As a pro-life person, I find it very insulting. I think the state would be better off with those who value all human life rather than those who, who will dehumanize and eradicate a whole class of human beings. Thank you. All right, thank you for the call. Thank you, Bill. I well, probably don't want to go into it. I will say this. I, too, valued human life. We have it, some, some of us have different opinion about when life begins that I think is a religious question. But do appreciate your call, Bill. And um, let's go to Scott from Bethalto. Hi, Scott. Hi. Okay. How You're you doing, on. Okay. Oh, yeah, I would like 
like to make a comment about the flooding mm -hmm. uh, issue. Um, it seems that uh, a lot of it is related to uh, progress and economic development where they block out and build levees around all the natural floodplains where the river is supposed to overflow into. You block it out and uh, get permits and build all these fancy shopping centers and everything. And uh, when the river overflows, it has nowhere to go. The rain comes down and it's all pumped into the main channel of the river. And it just seems to me that something needs to be done about saving the wetlands and saving the, the natural uh, overflow areas. And that would uh, cause a lot less problems with the major flooding issues from time to time. And I'd like to hear your comments on that. I couldn't agree with you more. I, I, I think that we have already seen that the idea of a 500-year a levy is, is folly. Uh, I, I think it's, it's sort of an, it's an oxymoron to think that you can manage nature. You can't. And that's where we are today. And I think many hydrologists will tell you that uh, a, a less is more approach is, is probably something that we need to think about. But at this stage of the game, I'm not sure how, how we turn back the clock and undo the damage uh, when it comes to this overmanagement and the construction of levees and trying to, you know, to the point where the, the people in Minnesota and the people in St. Louis and up and down the Mississippi are talking about New Orleans and dredging out the, uh, you know, the, the port of New Orleans and, and trying to, to, to manage it that way. I, I, I think that it's going to have to be a, an entirely new approach. And there are a lot of scientists who have been speaking out on this and they're just not being listened to. So I'm with you, Scott. I don't know where you are. On I all of it, never right? argue with Wendy about hydrology. So I'm going to, I'm uh, as actually well said, I think there's, um, I don't really have anything to add. I appreciate uh, what you said. And I, um, let's go to Jan from Crestwood. Thank you, Scott. <laughs> Hi, Jan. Hi. I'm calling about the um, effect that the anti-abortion uh, issue may have, as well as the other issues that are coming up in Missouri that keep us from being a middle-of-the-road state anymore. Mm -hmm. And I think of more consequence than the high schoolers not coming here for college or the college graduates that aren't going to want to stay, because that's our, our future brains, and that's what any state or any country needs. And that's been an ongoing issue for probably two to three generations. Um, maybe, I mean, at least we've been having conversations about it on this program for a very long time. Since the, the beginning. I will say what's new now, uh, and this is, again, not a, I mean, everybody knows to watch our show that I'm pro-choice. You know, that's fine. But what's new about this is this is the first time that, go, that the Republicans have tried governing on this issue as much as running on it. If you look at Ronald Reagan, uh, the genius of Ronald Reagan in 1980, uh, was he, he ran on, he was a great communicator. If you remember, he ran on having a constitutional amendment to ban abortion. Mm -hmm. And somehow it never came up because he, was, he, he, he figured it out that it was a galvanizing issue. It was a very powerful issue for Republicans and it really helped solidify his base. But, you know, he made no effort whatsoever. In fact, one of the two justices he appointed, Sandra Day O'Connor, was one of the key justices in uh, 1993 in the Planned Parenthood case on the pro-choice side. So it was, um, my point being, this is a whole new era. If we're actually gonna have a situation where Missouri is a, you know, has no abortion clinics, no abortion providers, and has no, uh, has no exceptions for rape and incest in its laws, pending obviously the um, challenges to Roe v. Wade, I think it's a whole new world uh, politically because I don't I don't think that's sustainable for the Republican Party. It is a it is a whole new world, and as you pointed out last week, Ray, uh, that these uh, machinations, if you will, have have been in the works 
since Casey versus Planned Parenthood right. in, in, in 1993 uh, or 1992. And what Casey did while upholding some key provisions of Roe also managed somehow to, to broaden the state's ability to enact restrictions. Right. So this has, as you said last week, has, has been, this has been building for a very long right. time. And as Barack Obama famously said, elections have consequences. And this is all about the Supreme Court. But right. I still think the Supreme Court is a, that's still sort of a. a I, the Supreme Court send mixed signals on this right it now. Absolutely but has. I think the more important point is that you know, Missouri has effectively outlawed abortion throughout much of the state. There are no providers other than in St. Louis. Right. And, and I'm just going to tell you, I think that politically, you say elections have consequences. Um, he said I think it. it's going to, I, well, and I, he was right. Yeah. Um, and I think that this one, this is an issue that has been a very uh, good issue for Republicans in Missouri for a long time. And I'm not sure that in 2020 it's going to be such a good issue. We're, we're going to have to see when, when, when people are faced with the reality of these policies, um, that's a different thing than talking about simply saying, are you pro-life or you pro-choice? So we'll see what happens. Let's go to Thanks, Mike Jan. from St. Louis. Mike, what's on your mind? Hi, Mike. Hi, I'd like to uh, talk about this abortion issue. Sure. I personally have always felt that this is a parental decision and is nobody's business. It cannot be legislated. When human beings are talking about their procreation, we don't need anybody else butting in. We don't need it to become political. It is a parent's decision. It always has been a parent's decision whether it's a couple raising a family who don't want a disabled child for their own personal reasons, it's their decision. It's their private business. It's not the business of the legislators, the other public, or anyone else. Okay. Back to the police and the firefighters. If you want them to stay, here's what you do. You exempt the earnings tax and you exempt police and firefighters from the St. Louis sales tax. That is a real okay. incentive to keep them here. Okay, and well, that's thank where they should be. Well, all right, Mike, thank you for the call. We, uh, we Thanks, didn't get Mike. to that tonight, but um, thank you for the call, Mike, and we appreciate it. Who's next? Let's move to uh, St. Peter's. Chris is on the line. Hi, Chris, welcome. You're on Donnie Brook, your turn. Hi, uh, I just have just basically a statement. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I wish the uh, state of Missouri and Parsons would take more interest and energy into examining the nursing homes and their situations and rather than picking on the only abortion clinic in Missouri with so many nursing homes in bad shape and their staff. Okay. So I think that's a good you know, suggestion. Um, so, okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Chris. I like them doing almost anything, but what they're doing right now to plan further, but let's go to the Twitter verse. At Holy Star 77, why does Missouri want to become the only state not to guarantee abortion services as a right? The rest of the industrialized world offers these services to their citizens. The caller was right. This is about denying women health care. Thank you, at Holy Star 77. And STL Rev writes, due to climate weather disasters are the new normal. That is why the flooding isn't getting the attention it did in 1993. And that may be an interesting um, point. I mean, we are sort of getting a little bit numbed. We're getting used to, to it. A lot That's of things sure. in our society. Let's go to Mary to, from St. Peter's. Hi, Mary. Hi, Mary. Hi there. How you doing? I have a question or a sure. comment to Ray. Ray, you talked about uh, people t uh, giving trouble country versus city people. Mm -hmm. I'm 94 years old. When I was a kid, I loved St. Louis. I was brought up there. Mm -hmm. And our cousins moved up here from Illinois. And the kids started in the neighborhood, started calling them Hoosiers. And I didn't understand this. I asked my dad and he said, it's because they don't know any better. A Hoosier, somebody come from Indiana. Right. And, <laughs> but they would give the kids trouble. But right. dad said, you don't pay any attention to what people say. You go on with your life, and you know it's a good place to live. And another thing about the injuries to hockey players, 
you know, I used to go ice skating on Sunday afternoon at the arena. This was terrific for us. And if we were very careful, my friends and I could sneak behind the seats and we could watch the fly. We missed we the lose, last we part lose, of that. We, we, out, you know. oh, we you, you, lost you cut minute. out, Mary. Mary, but thank you so much. 94 years young, eh? Well, thank you so yes. much for calling and watching our show. We appreciate it. That's going to be our last okay, call for the we evening. Never worried about him getting hurt. Thank you. Thank you Thanks, for calling, Mary. Mary. And uh, thank you all for the calls to Daddy Brooke, your turn. And we will see you again next week. Let's go, go Blues. Blues.